These days, I don't spend that much time keeping up with the world of secular politics. It isn't that interesting, aside from the reactions that secularists on the left, and even the so-called religious left, have to anything related to the current president of the United States. That stuff is entertaining, but beyond simply being a combination of amusing and kind of sad, the antics of the day-to-day -day political life in the United States and the broader West really isn't that interesting to me anymore. And that's sad, because I'm a trained political scientist. You'd think this would be my bread and butter. But it really isn't anymore. That is doubly true for rumors about what political figures are alleged to be doing. All that having been said, however, a controversial figure in both American politics and in Catholic circles made headlines last summer when it was revealed he was working with Cardinal Burke on some kind of school or institute to train fu future Catholic leaders in Europe on combating the worst aspects of modernism that touch the lives of everyday Catholics. Or so it's been reported in ways that make it sound like that. This drew a firestorm of response from many Catholics who, for whatever reason, do not like anything affiliated with Donald Trump, and people are f totally free to feel that way. That story, like so many others, came and went and was largely forgotten until this past weekend when that figure re-emerged with harsh words about Pope Francis. That story and the story of his alleged work with Cardinal Burke is what we'll be covering today. Buckle up. First, I wanted to let my audience know that I am still accepting submissions of articles, poetry, art, and other media for the blog returntotradition.org. Submissions can be sent to the email address listed in the description of this video. Also, we are close to having enough patrons that I will soon start doing patron-only live streams, where I'll answer questions from the audience on a regular basis, and I might even appear on camera. For as little as $1 a month, you can get in on the fun, so head over to Subscribestar or Patreon and become a supporter. Links are in the description below. Thanks, and on to today's news. That figure I've been referring to is, of course, Steve Bannon, former editor of Breitbart and former White House advisor to the president. The coverage of this story has been beyond slanted, as is expected in the U.S. and Western press, with its well-known hard-left bias. Have a look at these headlines. NBC. Steve Bannon and U.S. ultra-conservatives take aim at Pope Francis. The Guardian, out of the U.K., Steve Bannon told Italy's populist leader, Pope Francis is the enemy. Crux, which is allegedly taking the Catholic pulse, challenging Pope on multiple fronts, Bannon wants to train gladiators. The National Catholic Distorter, on Raymond Arroyo interviewing Steve Bannon, Arroyo's EWTN show is anti-Francis, pro-Trump propaganda. You get the idea. Each of these stories appeared within several days of each other in the secular media. And yes, I count the so-called National Catholic Reporter as a secular media outlet because it certainly isn't Catholic. But be that as it may, Bannon made the news this weekend when he spoke with NBC News about the Pope. I'll quote some excerpts from that piece so you can see what it is that NBC is doing. Bannon told NBC something that in my mind is self-evidently true when he said of the sex crisis in the church, quote, the Catholic Church is heading to a financial crisis that will lead to a bankruptcy. It could actually bring down not the theology, not the teachings, not the community of the Catholic Church, but the physical and financial apparatus of this church, end quote. By all that, he means buildings, nonprofit organizations, and the general material wealth of the church. The NBCP says, well as the others, begin by reminding their readers that Steve Bannon is a populist nationalist and was at one time a close advisor of Donald Trump's before launching into a sort of silly linking of Trump to Cardinal Burke, Benedict XVI, and Catholic traditionalism. You can see this in the following quote from the NBC News article. The previous section just before it talks about how a new wave of pundits and so-called far-right figures are leading attacks against the Pope before it gets to this next gem. Quote, the, They, these pundits and thinkers, were supporters of Francis's traditionalist predecessor, Benedict XVI, sorry, can't help but laugh at that, who unexpectedly resigned in 2013. On Thursday, Benedict published a letter outlining his views on the sex abuse crisis. Quoting that, The crisis caused by the many cases of clerical abuse 
urges us to regard the church as something almost unacceptable, which we must now take into our own hands and redesign, end quote, he wrote. Bannon has found an ideological ally in conservative Cardinal Raymond Burke, a former Archbishop of St. Louis who was demoted by Francis and has supported calls for the Pope's resignation, end quote. Do you see what they're doing there? But it continues. One thing not reported here is that Steve Bannon is a Catholic, though you'll, they do report that in the next little bit. It should be obvious due to his interest in the papacy and his close work with Cardinal Burke, but it has gone on unreported for the most part. But most telling is this clip from NBC's report on this. They actually broadcast this. Note the tone and who they interview here. Pope Francis is a new kind of leader, a humble priest who reaches out to immigrants, gays, and Muslims. And now the same person who helped elect President Trump is going after the Pope. The administrative apparatus of the church has to be changed. That's President Trump's former campaign chairman, Steve Bannon, now on a new crusade. Are you feeling confident that after you helped bring pretty significant political change to the United States, that you can also impact change here? Uh, absolutely, no doubt. Bannon's goal is to save the Catholic Church from the Pope, who he says is failing to deal with decades of sexual abuse by priests. My problem with the Pope today is about this crisis on pedophilia, that they are not treating this as a crisis. But critics say Bannon, a Catholic, is using the sex abuse scandal to attack a Pope he and a movement around him consider too liberal. If you're against migrants and refugees and you don't think they have any rights in the world, then someone who is reaching out to them, that's going to upset you. We drove outside Rome, where Bannon is restoring this grand monastery. Bannon plans to build an apartment for himself here and live here part of the year in this monastery of Bannonism. He says this will be a school to teach Judeo-Christian values to a new generation of nationalist populace. And Bannon says the Pope is the most powerful opponent to his plans. He's constantly coming back and putting all the faults in the world on this populist nationalist movement. Well, maybe he's right. Maybe these right-wing movements are, are a problem. Absolutely nonsense. <laughs> Bannon's ambitions go far beyond the U.S. There are people who are going to see this and think, oh no. Steve Bannon, the guy who helped put Trump in the White House, now has his sights set on the Vatican. Why would they Will think, this why guy would, just why, stop? Why, why, because why would they because think it's that? true. Because that's what you're doing. You're trying to bring change to this institution. I, 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 this, this institution needs change. This institution is in decline. I think people will say that. So this is just the beginning. Oh, this is very beginning. Very beginning. This is going to take years. When you're interviewing Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church as a credible source on the character of a conservative Catholic, you know you've got problems. Elsewhere, in another NBC News clip that I wasn't able to include here, he basically says that those opposed to the current Pope's program of modernism hate migrants, the acronym people, and of course, the poor. I'd say that Jimmy Martin was guilty of calumny in saying that, but that should go without saying. In this crisis, I've been continuously surprised at the willingness of the secular media to stand by the present Pope, despite the mess going on around him involving people that are in his inner circle. That NBC piece, before launching into singing the praises of the current pontiff as a trailblazer who opened the church's future to the global south, yeah, they said that, leaves off on this attack. Quote, Burke and Bannon reportedly met at the Vatican in 2014 and are both involved in building an incubator for budding right-wing ideologues in Italy. Bannon described the project as an academy that brings the best thinkers together to train modern gladiators. End quote. That's some unbiased reporting. Now, it's worth noting that Cardinal Burke has repeatedly denied the claim he has ever met with Bannon in 2014 or after. If he has in more recent months, I really couldn't say. So what does that modern incubator of gladiators actually do? The NBC News article doesn't actually tell you, but I have the information for you. You're welcome. The Institute's name is the Dignitatis Humanae Institute, named after the document by the Second Vatican Council on Religious Freedom. So, fact check time. If Steve Bannon were a hardline traditionalist Catholic, 
Would he be naming the school that he has reportedly been building for five years now in the Italian mountains after a conciliar document that promoted religious indifference? I mean, religious freedom. I seriously doubt it. But let's continue. Quoting a Reuters piece from September 2018, quote, Cardinal Raymond Burke, a leading Vatican conservative who is president of the Institute's Board of Advisors, said Bannon would be playing a leading role there. Burke told Reuters he looked forward to working with Harnwell, who we'll be quoting in a moment, and Bannon to promote a number of projects that should make a decisive contribution to, de to the defense of what used to be called Christendom, end quote. Bannon's increased engagement with the Institute demonstrates how his involvement in Europe extends beyond electoral politics to an effort to build a populist faction inside the Catholic Church. And, and the poll quote from Reuters. Now, that sounds rather harmless in my mind, but then again, I have nationalist tendencies, so maybe I'm biased. And before people bristle at the idea of a Catholic being a nationalist, Catholics helped develop strong nationalist movements throughout Western history, working against communist and Masonic liberal forces in the name of solidarity and subsidiarity, which are core features of Catholic social teaching that go back to at least St. Thomas Aquinas. The concept of open borders and globalism are not Catholic in the slightest. It's a concept that I plan to explore in greater detail in the future, for the Church's position on nationalism and patriotism is more complicated than populism bad, endless waves of Islamic migration good. Bannon's work at that institute is twofold. The drafting of curriculum for teaching future European political and religious leaders and fundraising for its operations. That's typical nonprofit organization work, in other words. The institute was founded in the aftermath of the confirmation hearings for a former confidant of John Paul II to the European Commission, a guy named Rocco Butglioni, who faced insurmountable opposition due to his traditional views on sexual morality and gender relations. Quoting that Reuters piece again, quote, During a confirmation hearing, Butglioni, who was nominated to the European Commission by then Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi, described homosexuality as a sin and said the principal role of women was to have children. Amid political uproar, Butglioni withdrew from consideration for the commission, end quote. One of the current Institute's principal figures described the work they are doing in this way. The Institute was setting up two training programs, a leadership course that Bannon is helping to design, which is described as an academy for the so-called Judeo-Christian West, and the Cardinal Martino Academy, named after a former papal ambassador to the United Nations, which will promote pro-life Catholic social teachings. End quote. In other words, this institute is a conservative but otherwise modern Catholic institution operating in the post-conciliar mold of partnership with lay political authorities, including ones with a profoundly anti-Catholic and anti-Christ bent like the United Nations. Modernism isn't only a left-wing ideology. Let's try to remember that. Now, I'm really not sure what the big deal here is with this story. A conservative American Catholic despite, dislikes the, Amer the present pope. I'm shocked. A conservative American has populist tendencies and has lent his expertise to the populist movement of Europe. I'm really, really shocked. Both of these are barely newsworthy, yet the media is using Bannon, a figure that is super scary and controversial, to tar traditional Catholics and anyone who wants the leadership of the church to act Catholic again as far-right extremists. Welcome to the news and media in the current year. It's also tiresome. As always, thank you for listening and for your support. Pray and do acts of penance for the liberation and exaltation of the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Viva Cristo Rey.